Just like with any form of media, the video game industry doesn't always release the same hardware or software in every region. For example, here in the UK we never got Japan exclusives like the Wonderswan, or even US exclusives like the Sega Nomad. But one console with which I've always had a strange fascination that we never got is the Virtual Boy. Now don't get me wrong, I realise that the Virtual Boy is not a good console. I have played it enough even though I don't own one, and my impressions of it are pretty much the same as everyone else's. It's not good. But as an oddity, it's strangely satisfying. In terms of games, there's only really one that stands out, and that is Wario Land. Now, well the thing is, I could review this game, but quite honestly, what's the point? Everyone already knows that this is the one good game on the system. Having said that, it's not actually the best use of the supposed virtual reality nature of the console. That actually goes to Teleroboxer. Wario Land was, like most games on the system, merely a 3D game, not a virtual reality game. So, well, what's this video about then? I'm not going to review Wario Land as a VR game. I'm here to answer a simple question, a question asked by the angry video game nerd back in 2008. Well, sort of. In his review of The Virtual Boy, he questioned why some of the games even needed to be on the system in the first place. Roll VT. The, the video. Roll, roll the video. But it's actually a good game. Damn good. But only one problem. It's on Virtual Boy. Why in the holy mother of f does this need to be on Virtual Boy? It's a puzzle game. This is the kind of thing that belongs on Game Boy. To be fair, at that moment he was referring to Bomberman Panic Bomber, but he still makes a good point. A lot of the games could have justifiably been Game Boy games, and that's why today I'm going to be playing Wario Land as it arguably should have been played, as a Game Boy game. Now I've had to play around with this a little bit so that it's in black and green rather than blood red, and I've managed to hack myself a controller, of sorts, and when this inevitably breaks, I also have a USB NES controller as a backup, as these use the same button configuration. Obviously the Virtual Boy had a much more complicated controller than the Game Boy, but if we take a look at the original manual, we can see that the right control pad isn't used at all, the right triggers are used for dash, but the select button isn't used either. So if we switch select to dash, then we essentially don't need any more controls than are available on the original Game Boy. It's a little bit messy, but I'm only trying to prove a point here. In this game we play as Wario as he is on vacation by the hours and river. <clears throat> he spots masked creatures carrying treasure, and as he tries to steal it for himself, he falls through the floor into a dark cavern. It's actually quite a smart way of setting the scene for the dark environment that the Virtual Boy creates. Even the original advert gets a bit dark for a Nintendo product. Ready? Ready? Roll VT! He's the epitome of evil. And he's on the prowl in the third dimension. It's Wario. The diabolical one has gone 3D, where evil runs deep and danger comes out of nowhere in the most incredible adventure ever seen on Virtual Boy. It's Wario Land, a 3D game for a 3D world. Wait till they get a load of me! <laughs> Before we start, we need to set up my homebrew controller here so that it works with the game. We need to select the D-pad over here, but we don't need the right D-pad. We do need the A and B buttons. We need to start, but we also need to make select one of the dash triggers. Okay, and that should do it. First thing to point out is that although the aspect ratio of the Virtual Boy is technically 4-3, the games actually look closer to widescreen. You had a bit of freedom to focus the images so that they appeared clearly in both eyes, but when the ROMs are extracted they appear much wider than the Game Boy's screen. We don't have the issue of focusing with a ROM, but we can see that there's information down at the bottom like lives remaining, coins collected, etc. So just cropping it into a true 4-3 or even a 1-1 one -one pixel perfect isn't going to work. It's fine on the Virtual Boy because you can just get a bigger or smaller image with bigger or smaller black bars surrounding it, but it doesn't really work on the Game Boy. However, we can fix that. So now it's starting to look a lot more like a Game Boy game. I've recolored it, and I've also moved some of the elements into a more compact screen arrangement, so it's closer to what it would have looked like had it been ported to Game Boy hardware. The thing is, while this looks a bit like an 8-bit game, the Virtual Boy did actually have a 32-bit CPU. It was Nintendo's first 32-bit system, in fact. 
which to be fair isn't surprising as it was released to plug the gap between the 16-bit Super Nintendo and the 64-bit Nintendo 64. It had more RAM than the Game Boy, the processor was five times faster, and the display was around twice as big in terms of pixel density. So I'm not sure how easily or otherwise this would have been able to be crammed into a Game Boy cartridge, particularly with things like the scaling of those spiked balls. Having said that, I've done my homework a little bit. I may not be a game developer myself, but I've spoken to one of the few people out there that's still developing for the system, and apparently it wouldn't have been that big of an issue, at least in theory anyway. You might get a little bit more limited on distance, but it's not to say that it couldn't have been done. And yes, technically it's a 32-bit system, but it's also pulling double duty, as it needs to be able to render a slightly different image between the two screens simultaneously. The graphics and the animations are a bit more polished than you'd see on the likes of Wario Land 2, but there's nothing to suggest that you couldn't at least make a decent port of this, or even remaster it for the Game Boy Advance and release it alongside the NES Classics range. It's a shame that this is destined to go relatively forgotten, as it's actually really well done. You can see nods to this game in future releases, like the ability to jump back and forth between the background and the foreground, which you can see done perfectly in games on the spiritual successor to the Virtual Boy, the 3DS, in games such as Kirby Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot. But maybe that's the answer. Maybe it was a bit ambitious to simply say that Virtual Warrior Land could have been just as good on the Game Boy, but why isn't it on the 3DS Virtual Console? It would be perfect. You don't need to mess around too much with the code, you could just take the ROM and it would work with the native 3D nature of the console. No headaches, no lugging around a big red box, and what's more, Nintendo would make money off it and show that there were decent games on the Virtual Boy, rather than it just being a stain on their history. Not to mention a stain on Gunpei Yokoi's history. I started this video to answer the question, could Virtual Wario Land have been made for the Game Boy? And to a certain extent, yes. But it would have had to have some work done to the UI, the animations, the scaling. Not to say that it couldn't have been done, that is. But, well, in the end, all I've come up with is a more pressing question. Why was this never released on the 3DS? If anything, this is the more obvious place to port it. It's not like it couldn't have been done. We got 3D remastered versions of games like Kirby's Adventure, as well as other games from the NES, the Genesis, the Master System, and even arcade titles. Admittedly, the 3DS doesn't have a long life expectancy at this point, but I for one would be first in line to get my hands on a fully 3D virtual Wario Land, or Tellero Boxer, or even Jack Bros. I realise Jack Bros is Atlas, but still. I mean, we've already seen people are trying to tweak emulators so that they work with modern virtual reality headsets. Even things like Google Cardboard. So there's obviously an interest in playing these games. The problem was never the software, it was the hardware. And these days we have the hardware. The 3DS is not dead yet, so please Nintendo, make it happen. And also, please don't copyright claim my channel. Please? Assuming this video doesn't have a million copyright claims against it and you're still watching, you can check out more videos by clicking on the links on screen now. And please do make sure to hit that subscribe button.